So, hi guys, myself and John are back from Mobile Action. John, yeah. you've been waiting on this one. I have, I have. Um, oh, someone's excited. I'm that excited, just because I'm rocking forward in the chair. <laughs> Careful, <laughs> Warren broke one of those already. I know, I, I was there. I was sat beside him going, what, what just happened? I damn near cacked myself when he done that. It was just boom, what's he broke? Anyway, we have D-Day Firefight, the new starter kit for Bolt Action. So, this is going to be what? Skirmish level game, just get you the flavour of it? Yeah, this, this is an... Uh, there's enough models in this box to uh, do a small American platoon. So there's uh, there's two two American squads in the box, right. one German squad in the box, both all ten men. Right. Um, the Germans have a Hanamag half track with them as so well. I'm guessing that balances out because they'll have the the heavier weapon platform. So you'll see how vehicles start to interact with yeah. stuff without it's, being too heavy. It has enough in the box to do sort of. You'll figure out what your movement is, how things move, how things fire. Mm -hmm. um, reaction to fire because that's something else that's in the game. Yeah, which so that's, that's actually something we haven't done in our games. We've not done yet because every time you fired at a unit that I've been playing, it's already had its action. True. So we've not actually had that situation yet. Yes. Um, it also has some of the scenery, some of the the ruined farmhouse, which yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. If you're a terrain maker or someone who loves just playing around with cool table stuff, this is going to just add that little bit of extra detail to your first game. So you're not Absolutely. just setting down books and cans and going. That's a farmhouse, that's a silo. Yep. No, it's not, it's a can and a bunch of books. It also makes really good scenery for um, dioramas. You know the one I'm talking about yes. in my cabinet with the tiger. Yeah, I know, I know. Can, can we get an image of that? I'll, you, you fire it across I'll me. Fire it across. I'll, we'll, I'll put we'll it get up. Some images. Just because I want to show off because I actually <clears throat> won a competition. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that head's just going... It is a bit. Anyway. We, we also have a mini rule book in the box. Yes, now that's something very, very useful. And something we've been dying to make, which is in this box. Yes, well, quick... let's, let's crack open the box and show everybody. Yes. <laughs> you know, let, wh why tell them why when tell we can them show them? The whole the idea, a picture is worth a thousand words. So this is the bit you're on about. This is the bit I am on about. This so. is a quick reference sheet. Yes, with pin markers with, and two rulers. With pin mar sets of pin markers and two rulers on it. Now, yeah, I, I like the pin markers. Yeah. I would like to see what some of the third-party companies do. Yeah, you know some, you know the disc you get for Star Wars X-Wing? I would mm -hmm. like to see one of those done that just counts from, say, 1 to 10, because that's all and you just, really need. Just have one for... Aye, one for each one squad. One for each unit you have on you know, the field. If, if you got cool. those in, like, what, packs of five? Yeah. Absolutely that'd cool. perfect. That'd be cool. Yes, yes, he's pointing right. to you going, do it, do it. So under close cam here, this uh, is our quick reference sheet. All the charts. All the charts, so we have weapons, close quarter, Airstrike, artillery, artillery barrage, which is something I use quite a lot. Yep. How to hit tanks. Yep. And then we have your movement, your shooting, your turn sequence, your, your orders. orders, troop quality and morale. Mm -hmm. and this is exactly what we've been. Th this, this is what we, we've played a couple of games now over the last couple of weeks, getting into it. Yeah. And it's the one thing we find during our first games. Without this, we are constantly flicking You're through the book, going back through the rule book. And we had two rule books during our games, and yep. we were still both flicking through them. Yeah, I was going time. to one section, staying at it. John was going to another. Yeah, you know. So what else we have on this? We have the pin markers, which are nice. Yes, you know, I believe we also have how you damage vehicles yes, on here. Yes, is, how it, do, is it how to? Let me see. Hits to armored targets. So that's yeah the chart for damaging. So you have cruised under, mobilized, on fire, and knocked out. Yeah, and I think it's just above that showing by how much you beat it, it tells you what type of hit it is, whether it's yeah. a catastrophic hit or just a glancing blow. Which is something, do you remember the, the weekender where Warren was talking about, what was it, he called it the Ven something or other? Oh, the, the Ven rules yeah, yeah, chart, yeah. You've played so many games that rules start to merge into each other. Yeah, we've we, had that a couple of times. We played our first, at least our, well, we've played our first two games using the 40k vehicle damage thing, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, is it immobilized? Oh, okay, fine, fair enough. Yeah. Well, we weren't really doing it properly, so... Yeah, because you have the, the armor, and depending on how much you beat the armor by, tells you what type of hit, so you can get maybe a minus two on the chart, or a yeah. plus one, yeah. you know, so, or I mean, even a double roll on the chart with both results taken, yeah. which is really nasty. Yeah. But so it, it's like uh, su superficial damage, D6 yeah. minus three, full yeah. damage, roll D6, massive damage, roll 2D6. Yeah depending on how much you've beat the armor by. Exactly, which is, it makes more sense for there to be those, the super heavy anti-tank guns now, because yep. you're doing such catastrophic damage, you're pretty much guaranteeing it's dying in one shot. Yep, or doing something that is taken out of the game effectively anyway in one shot. Yep, uh, what we also get in the D-Day thing is scenarios. Yep. So we, This is something that's very, very useful for everybody. Yep, so we have a few basic scenarios in here first, which yep. just cover the, the contents of the box. Up to scenario three mm -hmm. appears to be just your box contents. Yep. After that, it's sort of like a starter box and beyond. 
Aye, the know, battle box and beyond that we've done. Exactly. Add, add an armoured unit, add a tank or something like that into yeah. it, and it gives you a scenario to play that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's taking you beyond it. It's one thing that I'm liking seeing in these now, because Infinity done it, and now Full Action have done it, where they've just said, you know what, yes, we'll do a starter box, but we know people are going to be going beyond it very quickly, so yeah. let's give them a little advice on how to do it. Or you're going to buy the starter box, and yep. you're going to be, I want a tank to go with these. Yeah. So you'll just go and you, go ahead and buy your tanks yep. as well. Yeah. So we got our little A5 mini rulebook, yep. which is small, handy, and perfect. And it's, if I'm right, it's fully illustrated, as you can see under closed camera, giving yep. you everything you need. Fully illustrated and in full color, where a lot of mini rulebooks yeah. aren't. I, have a, I love some of the artwork you see in this. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I love that artwork. You know, the, the artwork for Bolt Action in general has a, a brilliant style to it, and some of the, the miniature shots they do, I mean, like, look there, you have the, oh, what are those? Hanamag and something else? That's uh, an SDK I've said 251 with the 75mm howitzer, yep. or short barrel 75mm gun, and in the background is a Yag Panther. There we go. Very <laughs> nice. What's what's nice about that is it's exactly the same as the hardback rulebook. Yeah, it's there's, just There's no difference in quality. Which no, nice. no difference in quality, and it's let's be honest, it's handier to be carrying something like that around yep. than the big rulebook having to leaf through it the whole time. You know, yep. the big rulebook it's for whenever you're at home, you're sitting in your armchair, and, and you just want to leaf through stuff. Yep. Right. Next up, we have dice, bag of dice, bag of dice, simple little white dice, our, our bag of d6. Yes, simple little bag. It's all you really, really need at this point. It's yeah. just that many dice for this box. Yep. We then have a ruined farmhouse. The ruined farmhouse. Right, we? we'll tear the bag yeah, open. We'll crack that open. We may have looked at this before, but I can't remember. I uh, think Warren sat down with Alessio in England and had a chat through uh, the different types of these because this does come separate. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a couple of different variations. So you have the coin stones, you have broken wall, more coin stones, uh, so big the, front wall. Yep. And another bit Side of wall. wall. We have a chimney stack. Yeah. I love the detail on the chimney stack. Because you've got the, the rough stone mm -hmm. with the bigger corner stones around it, which is really, really nice. The thing that caught me with this kit is the wood effect, is the, the wood parts, mm. the, the damaged um, rafters and bits of floorboard and stuff like that. Yeah. I really like that touch because it adds it adds a level into the building. So mm. you're not just playing in an empty room. Mm -hmm. You have the, the extra bits and pieces that you can jump up. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, uh, whenever we were playing our last game, we broke out uh, some of the foreground stuff, the streets mm -hmm. of Mordenburg. Yep. And yes, they're meant to be fantasy, but they fit it in really, really well. I know Warren was joking on the weekender a while back about... Yeah, we uh, were playing in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory or something, you know, <laughs> Willy just, Wonka's hometown. Whenever I was sitting editing that, it was just me going, you cheeky get. I could take that out, but I'm not going to, because we I were, want to, I we want to rebuttal that. We were not there to defend ourselves no, against we were not. his we brutal were not. assault. <laughs> brutal assault. Are you calling a lawyer? I might have to. I might <laughs> All right, have. anyway, uh, let's move these components out of the way because we're getting a little cluttered. We have the house end as well, which has got big holes and stuff yes, in it. Yes, that's called a gable end or gable end. Fine. I know Good. stuff too. I know you do. All right. Shush. But it's, it's even got internal and external detail, which I like, because yep. some of these kits you'll see they have beautiful detail on the outside, you go inside, the and then it's flat. Yeah. You know, again, it's, it's why I love the foreground stuff as well because it has all the internal details too. Yeah. Next. We also have. Little, little piles of rubble. Little piles of rubble. Now the way I did these, yeah, when I was well, when I was putting mm -hmm. mine together, is when you have the wall sections together in a corner, mm -hmm. they will Aye, they fill. Just... They will, they just fill in the corner a little bit and you know, make it look a bit more busy on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but that's pretty much it because everything else is more of the same essentially. So. Yeah, yeah. It's just all the other bits. The other thing is this system is actually mildly modular. I would call it. It is. So you can build it in different shapes and styles. So even if you get a few of these kits, you can build them in enough different ways that it doesn't feel like you just, you know, copy paste on the, the gaming table. Plus they do, dunk, have, dunk, dunk. they do have other rooms that you can mix in with these yeah, as well. Yeah, and again, you can mix those kits together. Yep. So it's not just one kit, it's a full kit system. Absolutely. Right, so we have our German infantrymen. Our German infantry spree. Yes, we have two of these to make ten men. Yep. So... There's there's one of them anyway. So we have most of the main bodies, the arms, the legs. Yeah. Um. This this sprue will contain everything except the weapons, which is on a separate sprue. Yeah. The one thing I will say is, make sure and don't just clip off the arms mm -hmm. whenever you're doing this, because they do come in pairs. Whenever I was building my own army, I did that, and it was just me going, "Where does this go? What is this with that? Is that with the other?" But if you keep them on the sprue and then just do it to the weapon, yeah. you know. Uh. So 
what we have is basically late war German infantry. Mm -hmm. um, the uniform style-wise and aesthetic-wise didn't really change much. It was the quality of the uniform, the quality of the material, and the material itself mm -hmm. that changed. Um, for example, the summer uniforms were made in what was called herringbone twill. Right. Uh, which, uh, if you remember my American Army uniform, the green yeah. trousers, yeah. green shirt, yep. that's herringbone twill. It's, yeah. it's like a denim. It's, it's reasonably comfortable to wear. It's reasonably comfortable. It's all cotton as well. So that would be the sort of summer uniform. And it was yeah. in a darker green, more of, more of a field olive green than what most of the German uniform was, which yeah. is a sort of a paler sort of green. Yeah, so green. if you're going for this, you'll maybe want to go for uniform green, German uniform green from Vallejo would yeah. be roughly the right color. Yeah. Um, we have all sorts of manner of equipment as well. So they have their mass tins, their zelt bands, um, their entrenching tools. Yeah, uh, uh, they've actually got a couple of style grenades in there. Yes. Just strapped onto the backpacks. Yep, so they also have that, that weird little canister thing here. Which little canister thing? That one. That's their mass tin. Oh, I thought that, was that not a gas mask tin? The long, the long, uh, the long cylindrical cylinder. one. Uh, the long cylindrical one is the gas mask tin. Yeah, which um, then the gas mask got thrown away after the first week because no one was firing mustard gas. Everyone was too scared to use gas in World War II, so no one used gas in World War II. Yes, at which point the gas mask got thrown away and that just got used for carrying any little extra bits you wanted. But it shows how paranoid that the Allies were that on D-Day everyone was issued a gas mask. Mm -hmm. All the landing forces had one that was sat on their chest. You look at Saving Private Ryan, that black bag on their chest, mm -hmm. that's their gas mask. Yeah. They also had a little thing on their arm. I know I'm going, I'm wax lyrical again. That's fine, that's fine. Um, they had a little thing of paper, a brassard mm -hmm. that yeah. went over the arm. Yeah. And this would turn black if there was gas in the air. Ah, I see. So it was a chemically reactive paper. Yeah. One question, how useful was that when it got wet? That's the point. When you when you watch the guys in Saving Private Ryan, those things are soaked and falling off their arms anyway. Yeah. But it was a it was, it was an a clever idea. idea. It was a clever a, idea. A kind of an early warning. Yeah. Sort now, of system. for me myself, why I've done up uh, I've done up this exact spree of German soldiers for my own forces. I've painted them up as here grenadier. Yep. So it's I think they're General Wehrmacht. Yeah. Aren't they? So the, they're they're not SS. They're not Hitler Youth or anything like that. The here is basically your general bog standard German infantry. Yeah. Um. Calling them grenadiers basically means that they are slightly more specialised in mechanised units. Mm -hmm. So they'll have their half tracks which yeah. is in the box as well. Yeah. Um, the the grenadiers were mostly the the infantry support to armoured units. Mm -hmm. So they would have followed the tanks in, or in a lot of cases, rode on the back of the tanks. And when mm -hmm. something happened, they hopped off and fought ahead. Yeah. Um, now the the one other thing I'd like to point out is there's a few different head options here. Yeah. So if if you grab this under the close camera, so I'll tip that up so you can have so, a look. You can see some of the guys just have the, the plain helmet, you yep. know, just battered out steel. Others have, I think there's at least one there with the camo netting on it, isn't yep. there? There's a couple, well, there's one or two with the camo netting on it. Mm -hmm. um, the ones you want to point out at the bottom of the sprue here. Yes, um, are your NCOs are they, and officers. Yeah, the officer NCO head. Um, one's wearing uh, yeah. your peak, what's called a peak crusher cap. Mm-hmm which is basically the field version of the officer's hat, the fancy one. Yep, which is what I would use for my second lieutenant. Use it for your second lieutenant, or you, you could have it as an NCO, but it seems a bit too overdressed for an NCO. Yeah, which is why I would say second lieutenant, and then the ski cap. The ski cap, which is the... Um, I'm, go I'm going to be a rivet counter here for a second, okay, or okay. a stitch counter. Okay. I believe that's an M43 ski cap. <laughs> is your anorak on tight enough, John? It, it needs to be a bit tighter. You know, just, mm. It might be wrong. It's a single button on the front rather than two <laughs> buttons. <laughs> huh. you, guys, you guys, you will know in the comments, there's bound to be another... I don't want to call you, I don't want to call our audience... Perfectionist, shall we say. Yeah, I didn't want to a call them stitch counters. A, a perfectionist. <laughs> no, but that is some people's hobby, though. The, them making it so perfect, going in so detailed. It's not them being an asshole it's them saying no this this is my hobby this is what i love about the hobby is getting so finely detailed about mm -hmm. it and if someone gets it wrong i feel i have a right to be annoyed about it because well you're not catering to my love well yeah pretty much um it brings up a story actually uh oh gonna wax the article again here we go warning skip to whatever length of video it is <laughs> and five hours it. later we were still discussing this with mr lyons yes um Back before reenactment really took hold, yeah, which is basically before Saving Private Ryan and before Band of Brothers, mm -hmm. say, well, Saving Private Ryan's 20 years old now. Is it 20 years old? Yeah. It couldn't be 20 years 94, old. 94, 95. Bloody hell. I, I feel like, I I feel like an old man. 
if I remember right, it was 94 or 95, because I remember going to the cinema I was this height. <laughs> uh, okay. Being dragged into, an, uh, what was it, an 18 rated movie? <laughs> Let me guess, your dad just going, come on, you will share my love of World War II. And you're just going, no, I want to go home and play my he, he went and watched it first to make sure the gore wasn't that bad. Oh, and that's they, fair enough, and responsible said, parent. Then he said, as a good responsible father would, you can close your eyes for the first five minutes if you want to avoid lots of gore. As a 12 year old or whatever you just went, age gore? I was at the time, huh? I went, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle it. But no, this is a very good sprue for German infantry. It's, yep. it's clean, it's clear, you have everything you want to arm your guys with on the, the weapon sprue, which we'll grab now. So he, give me that. He threw me off my story. I did, because I don't know why I was sitting here all night. Yeah. Stitch right. counters. <laughs> right, before reenactment took hold properly, right. you had a very small group of people that were very into it mm. because. Obviously because of what Nazi Germany did and all that, people yes. sort of went, let's just shove that to the side. And yes, uh, oh, oh, you can't talk about that. A few people were still quite rather interested, especially in England, there was mm -hmm. a lot of interest. And what would happen is that these guys would find um, original examples of uniform. Mm -hmm. They would then go to a, a cloth making factory, right? show them the pattern. These guys would then, they would order a 100 meter roll mm -hmm. of the material and they would cut it out and they would make their own uniforms. Right, I think I heard you telling me about someone who had done that for a camo pattern. Mm -hmm. So he went and got this 100 meter roll of this specific camo pattern that's yep. really rare now. Yep, it was the, uh, the Fallschirmjäger splitter yes, camo, the, which yes. was hard to get at the time. And I think those guys really started reenactment properly because they were the guys that did count the stitches and did make sure everything was right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you call people stitch counters today and you go, oh, anorak's on too tight, he's too many badges on his cap and all this sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, but, but at the end of the day, it, it's their love of it yep. that makes them do that. And it's the same with military vehicles as well. So mm -hmm. anyway, done wax lyrical ling 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 for now. Ling ling ling. Right. Okay. So we're, <laughs> Ger we're German to, weapon spree. Well, German weapon spree. Yes, we're on to German weapon spree. Ta-da! Ta-da! They have done a brilliant job with this. It's so, a fantastic little spree. Yep, so exactly. we've got two MP40s, which is the little submachine guns here. Yep. Or machine pistols, I would say you would call them. Yes, yes, machine because they, they would MP, fire a yeah. uh, 9mm round. 9mm. Yeah. You've got the MP44 down the bottom. Or what's which the is, other name for it? I don't know. The STG44, which is Sturmgewehr, which is Sturmgewehr. literally translated to... Uh, bullet thrower? Assault gun. Okay. Okay. Machine... Um, Sturmgeschütz, or you know, like Sturmgeschütz for the stuff okay, okay. is assault gun. Okay. STG is the Sturmgewehr, which is the assault rifle. That's okay. where that that phrase came from with mm -hmm. the AK forty seven and stuff. After the yeah, war. well, I mean, like this, I always thought was that not the precursor to the AK forty seven? Yes, it's, it's a very very similar design. Mister Kalashnikov seen these after the end of the war. He was a tank crewman mm -hmm. during the war, and when he was injured in hospital for a while, he seen a few of these and thought that's a really good idea. Let's make it simpler. Mm. and made the AK-47. Mm -hmm. Right, across from the MP-44, we have two heavy machine guns. So I think it's the MG-34 and 42. Yep, that's correct. So if you're wondering what the difference is, the MG-42 has a square end barrel. It has a, it's a very square shape along the barrel. All right, so the, the actual framework that holds the barrel yep. is a square shape, whereas yep. the 34 is it's a round shape. A more traditional machine gun, it's a, a fluted air-cooled yep. barrel, so it has the solid barrel in the middle. Mm -hmm. with a, a casing around the outside which has holes in it for the air cooling. Yeah, one thing to remember for these, whenever you're putting them into your squads, you have a special rule called Hitler's Bad so Only with the, the MG42. Yes, but what it does is it gives you an extra shot. So, so while LA. John's light machine guns will be firing three shots at me, I'll be returning fire with four. With four. And that one extra shot can make quite a difference across the turns. Yep, especially when you're trying to get stuff pinned down. Yeah, we then have a little pistol here yep. with a little holster. I think that's a Luger. That's an uh, that's a P thirty eight. Okay. Uh, down beneath that, we have part of the ammo box yep. for your MG. Yep. Little pair of binoculars. Yep. Uh, we have a couple of little style grenades. Yep. Uh, two just normal and one with a hand around it. Yep. We then have a K ninety eight with a scope on it. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Because I know you get annoyed whenever I think you get annoyed when people call it a car ninety eight. Is it? Yeah. I don't like people calling it cars. Call of Duty players call it car. Yeah. Because they look at the word and go, that must be its name. Yeah. Yeah. So he's so, got it right. He's doing well. So we have a K98 with scope and the rest without, mm -hmm. which are just going to arm through your squad. And there's one other type now, here. Yes, you've picked, you've missed this one out. Yes. What is this? What is that? I don't know. I'm don't asking. Know I don't know that. That is a Gewehr 43. Right. 
That is the German equivalent of a American Garand rifle. It's a semi-automatic, mm -hmm. seven shot, so it's five or seven shot mm -hmm. uh, semi-automatic rifle. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I know you and me have discussed a couple of times at your place about what some of the rifle teams were like, just how quickly they could actually fire with a bolt action piece. British rifle, plus, or British rifle sections. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Germans thought they were under fire from people with Bren guns mm -hmm. because these guys were so highly trained they could fire I between was, each other. Do -dum, do -dum. And they were accurate as well. You know, not mm -hmm. terribly accurate, not sniper rifle accurate, but they were ac they were putting down fire that was accurate enough to make someone think there I, was a machine gun. I see. Bas basically, there's a 10 inch square and their rounds are pretty much going inside that the whole time. Yeah. If they if they pepper the front of a house, you're guaranteed to not have a single miss out of a decent British Yeah, inside. now the other thing you get is, for the Germans, you get a little set of bases. Very which just round bases. Quite handy. Quite and handy. they're green for some reason. I don't know why they made them green. Green for grass? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Alright, now we're on to... The STKFZ251. Sorry, the half track. So our half track then, our SDKF said 251, which I had to say again. Yes, yes. Why, why are you so into the bloody codes for the, the vehicles? You know. In fact, did we actually get replies on the last video for what the G105 was and the G104? One person replied and said, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Should I spoil that for them? Gone ahead. Okay. So G104. Well, well, the guy was kind of right. He was like, I was thinking of Sherman mm. when you said it. And I was like, you're close enough. G104 is the parts manual definition for Sherman. Mm -hmm. G105 is the parts manual definition for an American Army half track. Yeah. <laughs> get that get that anorak so tight, choke Sorry. yourself. Right, anyway, the Hanamag. <laughs> yes. The Hanamag. This is a really nice plastic kit. It's really detailed. It's got everything you need for the half track. I mean, this is it. We've unboxed this before separately, so mm -hmm. I mean, you can always jump back and look at that again, but I don't care. You're going to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. So we have the jerry cans. Yep, so we have jerry cans down here, which are only called jerry cans because Germany built them first. Yes, and the slang term for a German soldier was jerry. Jerry, exactly. So we've got the two seats for your crew. Yep, so the driver and the assistant driver. Right, what's those two wee round bits? I believe those are headlights. Okay, so we have the headlights. And we have the, uh, the first piece here is the MG mount, mm -hmm. which is the rear anti-aircraft MG mount. So you'd have your mm -hmm. MG34 on that. And yeah. the back here is a, a tow hitch mm -hmm. for, well, these things could tow Nebelwerfers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. small artillery pieces, pack 40s and yeah. stuff. Uh, so so a, you've got your front axle and then your two sets of track. Yep, two sets of track. So we have the, the rest of the lower hull. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, the lower, lower hull. This is where the track will glue on. Then you have the lower part of the armoured section of the hull, which yeah, is so the, crew bottom compartment. Half of the Yeah, it's the bottom half of the crew compartment. If we flip it over, you'll get a better idea. Mm -hmm. So that's where our mud guards will be. That's where your front wheels are. It's underneath the either side. Mm -hmm. We'll have storage bins along the back there as well. Yeah. So shall we move on? Yeah, I think this is the earlier pattern. This is the earlier pattern. This is the SDKF Z. Uh, uh, I think it's 251. It's, it's either, it's the, it, yeah, it's the SDKF Z 251. I believe it's the A okay. or the D. No, no it, it's not the it's D because the D, the D, the D has, is the late one because we, we had that out a couple of weeks back. Yep. Or a week back or whenever, so. Here's the next bit. We have top section of the crew compartment and hull. Yep. So that's where you're going to mount your front MG. Yep. That's where you're going to mount your back. Yep. Uh, down from that, we have a little gun shield. That's so. the gun shield for the front MG mount. Yep. We then have an MG itself. Actually, a couple of them. Yeah, we have two MGs. So you have options for what you want that front MG to be. It could yes, be an MG you have 34 that. 34 or 42. Yes, yeah, so MG 34, MG 42. You have the crewman here yep. who is firing it. Uh, there we have. A loose MG yep. of some description. I that's think that's a 34. 34. I think this is the front mount there. Let me have a look. Because I think that, that goes down in the top. That's an aerial. That's what? That's an, an antenna. An antenna, sorry. Radio antenna. All right, I'll let John do this. <laughs> well, no, you've, you've covered all the bits that I could have geeked out about. <laughs> um, so we have some storage. We have the two, uh, four parts here which make up the internal seats. Yep. Uh, which also counter, uh, which double up as um, extra storage bins on the inside. Mm -hmm. You um, then have a oh, wait, tarp no. of some sort. I did, I did it wrong. Okay. I did it wrong. Okay. These are the two external storage bins which will sit underneath the front uh, armor along the sides. Okay. And these are the seat backs on the inside which then form the extra storage on the inside. Okay, you've got two heads there. Two helmets. Is it just two helmets? Just two helmets, Flip yep. over? Yep. Just two helmets. All oh, right, so you can just have two just helmets on as, as a bit of storage, yeah. Okay, that's uh, just extra detail you can add. What's the last wee bit? I've no idea. You've no idea. It's <laughs> oh, it's the um, 
Is that the front mount? It's no, it's the Bosch headlight for the front left mudguard. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on down, we have three tires. It's the convoy light. Okay. There you go. Okay, so we have three tires. So three tires, two, two good and one spare. Yep. Two and front then, with the, the hubs and one spare, so yep, that um, can go anywhere. Yep. Basically. And what's the last bit? The last bits here are the bottoms of the seats. Okay. Uh, in the back of the crew compartment. Okay. Right. Half track covered. Very nice kit. Now, we need we need the Yankee sprues now. Yes, now you get four of these. Yep. So we'll show you one. We won't yep. laboriously go through the lot. So these are the American sprues. Yep, so they have the bases already on the sprue instead of the Germans, which come separately. Mm -hmm. uh, moving up from there, we have a row of entrenching tools. Uh, yep. Uh, we have two legs and a... Yes, yeah, those two legs become a, a kneeling lower yep. body and the upper body to go with them. Yep. The next things we have along here are the webbing belts uh, for the waist. So they'll be your typically your, your Garand belts, which will have all your ammunition pouches. Mm -hmm. You have a uh, little bayonet, water bottles on there. Your water bottles and your bayonet. Mm -hmm. Further up from that, we have what's called the Doughboy packs. Yep. Which are the standard American infantry backpack. Yep. Um, some of these have the entrenching tools already on them, and some of them don't. Mm -hmm. So you have the options of either having the entrenching tool hanging from the guy's belt. Yep. Uh, and you're only building five from the sprue, so you have both for both options. Yep. Exactly. Further up, you have all your heads. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's mostly helmets with some scrim netting on them. Yeah, although you see the, this guy here, the fourth one across. Yeah. I like him because he's just smoking a stogie. Yep, he's, he's got a cigar going on there. Yeah, that, that's going to be your heavy weapons, dude. Yep. Uh, the next guy has a jeep cap on, I that's think. That's a jeep cap, yeah, a little woolen jeep cap. Yep. Uh, across from that, we have a helmet on its own. Mm -hmm. And then we have the final three head options Yep. as well. Yep, then up from that, we have the other four bodies for the kit. Yep, and then we have all the arms. Yep, uh, and again, they're paired. The Again, yes, yeah, so be careful when you're cutting, cutting these out so that you know what wep what arm goes with what weapon. Yep. Um, if you're at a loss, you can probably go on to either the Bolt Action Facebook page or you can uh -huh. go on to the Bolt Action website, mm -hmm. and they will probably have the manual or the diagram to show you, the yeah. sprue diagram to show you yeah, I mean, like, with what it's, weapon. It's normal little guys. There's nothing overly complex here. The arms are very different, though. There, there is SMG arms, there is arms specifically for the Browning Automatic Rifle, which is on the weapon sprue as well. Yeah, we'll show you that in a minute. We'll show you that in a minute. All right, uh, one thing we forgot for the Hannah Mag. You get transfer sheet. transfer sheet. So that's the transfer sheet, which has all the numbers that you can make up either a three-digit or four-digit number with, and the number plates for the actual mm -hmm. track itself, which are mounted on the front. And the General German Army Cross. Yes. Right, so two weapon sprues, because you have 20 Americans in this. Yep. Okay, so what all do we have? I'm seeing right, well, what I'll do is I'll flip it on its end again and we can work our way up. Okay, so from the bottom. From the bottom we have a bazooka. Yep. Uh, which is the M1 bazooka. It's got one projectile there and we've got one loose bayonet. Mm -hmm. We have two Garand semi-automatic rifles with bayonets fixed. Yep. We have two Thompson submachine guns. Yep. We have the Browning automatic rifle. Yep. And we have the Springfield 30 caliber sniper rifle. Yes. And up from that we have grease gun. We have a grease gun. We have two bandoliers for rifle ammunition. Mm -hmm. We have the, the two smaller of these ammunition pouches are for the BAR gunner. Mm -hmm. We have the Thompson mag pouches as well. Yep. And then up from that again, we have, I assume it's just a little bread bag. Uh, it'll be what would be called a musette pack, which is just, you know, it's a general purpose bag, mm -hmm. basically for anything really. Yep. Uh, across from that, we have the bazooka bag. Yep. Um, now I've seen, I'm not too sure per se, these were either carrying ammunition or you could break the bazooka down into two parts and carry it in the bag as well. Right. I, either or. Mm -hmm. So one would carry the bazooka, one would carry the rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, across from that we have, what do we have? Um, I know the name, I can't remember the name. Okay. Uh, we have two M1 carbines, mm -hmm. which are uh, 5.2 millimeter rounds. Yeah, so a very small puny round. Very, very small bullet. A lot of veterans said you'd be lucky if you could hit a barn door at 20 paces. Yeah, were these not mostly given to the, the Airborne? Mostly to Airborne because they had a, an Airborne version which had a folding stock. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them said that they were rubbish. Mm -hmm. It would take five or six rounds to put a guy down. Maybe yeah. a full mag if you weren't that good at shooting. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, across from that we have pistols and I believe those are grenades. Yes, those are the little pineapple grenades. So those are little pineapple grenades. And, and a pair of binoculars. A pair of binoculars and our pistols. Yep, up from um, that. Up from that we have more Garands. Mm -hmm. So we basically have all Garands here except nope. one for shotgun. one shotgun. Yes, which, uh, you which if you're clearing a trench out can be quite handy and devastating. Yeah, I've never seen too many guys using shotguns, so it must have been a very situational sort of thing. You see, I would throw one of those onto an NCO. 
Really? Just to differentiate him. But he, him surely he would have such a short range that he'd be nearly no use at all. Yeah, but he's the one at the back shouting for everybody else to go forward. That's a good point. What would be good with the shotguns is if you could... I don't know how the rules work for the Americans because I'm not that keen keyed up on them. Mm. Could you make several, a, a section with several shotguns and use them as clearing buildings? Possibly. possibly. It might, it's probably... You know, m maybe an option for one of the veteran squads. It's probably an option for... Because I know for, for my German forces, whenever I go to a, a veteran squad, mm -hmm. I can basically tool them up with anything I like yep. for machine pistol or MP44. A lot of the rules state on your NCOs, whatever's on the model. Yeah. Within reason, because he's not going to be running around with a bazooka because that's a two-man team. Yeah, and he's not going to be running, <laughs> running around, around with, with a BAR either. <laughs> yeah, with a, a medium machine gun or something. Yeah, it'll be a bit silly, but you know. Well, I mean, like that's one thing you had said to me earlier, and I thought it was heresy that I could take some of the American weapons and, and put them on the Germans. Germans. Yeah, why not? I, that just sounds wrong to me. There's plenty of photos. There's plenty of footage of. Germans and Americans using captured weapons. All right, well, I mean, like, I suppose we did see Fury recently and Brad Pitt was rocking about with an MP44. We'll talk about that because we have another unboxing to do, Four Bolt Action, where it, it, it will make a lot more sense to talk about Fury. Yeah. Yeah, you see sitting with him in the cinema while we were watching that? It was a nightmare. <laughs> right. Wait for this bit. This is amazing. <laughs> hey, because right, you were cheeky and went to see it earlier in the day. I was asked to go to the premiere in uniform. So yes, to promote I it. had to oblige. You had to oblige. I had to oblige. Twisted your arm. Put there at gunpoint. Oh yeah, I mean that drive to Belfast was the most painful thing in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was probably just you sitting there going, are we there yet? Yeah, yeah. Are Wait we there minute. yet? I'm driving. I can make this faster. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the last thing you get in this, which I think is a great idea, your you actually dice. get your order dice. Or your order dice. You know, so, order dice are very simple, and if you haven't seen how they operate, if this is your first time looking at bolt action, we have a demo game, it's on YouTube, there will be a link in the description of this video. Absolutely. So I think we're going to wrap it up for the D-Day Firefight. An excellent little box set. The most useful things you'll take out of this box set will be the reference sheet. The minis. The mini rulebook. Yep. And the scenery. Yes, but every, everything about it is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, it, this is the perfect way to get into bolt action. If you've been skirting on the edges and saying, mm, I might like to have a go at it, grab this box. It's just exactly yeah. what you need to get that flavor of it. It's what every game system needs. It needs a box that mm. doesn't require you to invest a lot of your time or a lot of your wallet yep. into it. And it gives you a full flavor of the game, gives you an example of everything that happens yeah, it's, in the it's game. It's lowering that hurdle to get in. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think the guys at Bolt Action over, or, or the guys over at Warlord, you have done a fantastic job with this, lads. People, you really need to go check this out. Right, John, yep. I think we're going to move on. We have yep. other unboxings to do. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Drop us a comment below. Let us know what you think. And let us know if we got anything wrong. And uh, we'll see you again in the next video.